wealth, security, and opportunity are a byproduct of success. However, it often comes at the expense of deep personal satisfaction and happiness. This is the Design Your Destiny podcast, and I am your host, Penny Chase, on board certified hypnotist and number one international best selling author. I work with the highly successful influencers, business leaders, corporate leaders who desire a life by design. In this podcast, I will bring to you succinct solo episodes and interviews that dissect the challenges of success and highlights the ways to leverage your most underutilized asset, your subconscious mind. If you desire peace and happiness in your life, better health and stronger relationships so you can enjoy the success that you have created, keep listening because this podcast is for you. I want to talk about my favorite subject with you today, just because there was an experience that I had this morning that I might, I might share, but it all comes down to three words. Well, one of them's hyphenated. So two words, and that's unconditional self-love. If you have ever criticized yourself, if you've ever judged yourself, um, if you've ever thought to yourself, yeah, you know, may- maybe you're just not cut out for this, right? Then there's some aspect that is not connecting within that self love. That's not to say you don't have self love. Let me be clear. But there's not unconditional self-love. When we have unconditional self-love for ourselves, we embrace ourselves and all of our air fingers, quote, imperfections. Because there's no such thing as perfection. When we can move into a place of acceptance of who we are, of acceptance for what we bring into this world and and how we were designed to bring it, right? Whoever, whatever we are, um, in terms of like career, profession, that type of thing. When we're in full self-acceptance of that, everything changes in terms of how we begin to look at other people. And when I say unconditional self-love, I'm, I'm not talking about like an ego or a conceitedness or, or, or anything like that. It's just like truly loving and accepting who we are and forgiving ourselves, letting go of the past. And when we have that unconditional self-love, a, a lot of things can begin to change in our habits and our life. Because when we're fully accepting of ourselves, that means we're accepting of the way that we look. We're accepting of how well we we can or can't do things. And that's not to say we can't improve, but we're accepting where we are without being harsh with ourselves. It, it, It takes stress off in our brain. It decompresses. When we get into brain science, like if we're self-critical, if we're self-judging, it creates stress in the mind because there's some hurdle, right, that we're not jumping over in our mind's perception. So a lot of things can shift for us. I, I don't work in the weight loss area, but I've had clients that when we have done this work and they have gotten to this place of full self-acceptance, weight just naturally falls off of them. 10, 15, 20 pounds. They don't diet. They don't do anything any differently. They're just in a place of full self-acceptance and they're not feeding their emotions or doing these doing these other these other things. It can also impact our physical health. I've had clients who had chronic pain. And we connected to work on specific motivational and confidence issues. And one client, she was on disability 
for her severe arthritis in both of her knees. She didn't, she gave up her walking stick. She didn't need a walking stick anymore. She started walking every day, drinking tons of water. Her whole life turned around. And what was most amazing is that earlier this year, I had not spoken with her in about three years. Earlier this year, she reached out to me on Facebook and she goes, oh my God, look at me. Just, just look at me. Um, she looks great. I, if I had to guess, she's probably lost 60 pounds at least. And she and I did not work on weight loss. We, he we healed her heart. We aligned her heart and her mind and let those things come together. And when we live in this space of unconditional love for ourselves, it's easier to not be attached to what others do because when we've healed this stuff in ourselves, we can recognize that other people have things to heal within them. And it's easier to be compassionate. It's easier to be forgiving. But there's one thing, there's one place where we can get caught up on this specific part of the journey. Well, actually it could happen at any part, but I find it happens here. It's that once we, it feels so natural and so good to unconditionally love yourself, we can go into this place if we're not careful of, well, you know, you just need to, you just need to heal your stuff. Why don't you heal your stuff? And, and then you won't have this problem anymore. And we have to understand that people are on their own journey of healing. We can't talk them into it. We can't force them into it. All we can do is be an example for them and to show them what's possible. And not from a place of talking them into change, but you can say, you know what, I, I, I totally relate to where you are. I, I was there too. And I didn't think I could do this either, but, but it's possible and just kind of let it go. They have to want to do the healing themselves. So I'll take a moment and, and share with you what happened this morning, because I was really surprised at the explosive impact that it had on social media. So I'm staying with my daughter-in-law in Seattle. And at four o'clock this morning, there was a knock on the door. And I looked out the peephole and, and there was a young man. I could see he was just standing there looking down. He wasn't, wasn't fidgeting. He didn't seem like there was like a real big issue. He didn't seem like a threat. And there were three of us here in the apartment. So I, I, I wasn't too concerned. So I, I unlocked the door and I opened the door about three inches. And I was like, can I help you? He goes, yeah, can you call 911 for me? I said, sure, hold on a minute. I shut the door, I locked it. Told my daughter-in-law to stay in the apartment. I, I said, I'm going to step outside. And I grabbed my phone and I, I stepped outside. I did not feel in any danger at all. Um, I worked in healthcare for 25 years. I can generally tell when people are, are agitated, that type of thing. And I was taught how to handle it when people are agitated. I also know not to allow myself to get backed into a corner. So if you're thinking, oh my God, you're crazy going out at four o'clock in the morning, I, I did it with situational awareness and experience. And when I stepped outside, I started dialing 911. I'm like, what's happening? And he goes, I've been trying to detox myself and I think I OD'd. And, you know, he's looking really tired. And I'm like, well, what do you think you OD'd on? And he's like, fentanyl. So I call the operator, I start giving her directions and he sits down and basically, well, I got first responders on the way. I'm trying to communicate with him. I'm trying to keep him awake because he very quickly went deeply somnolent and uh, was difficult to arouse and that type of thing. And, you know, I, I just kept shaking him and waking him up. And I'm like, look, you're in good hands. I used to be a nurse anesthetist. I got, you know, I got you, man. I, I, I know what to do. You're okay. Just stay with me. And as soon as the medics came, I just told them what he told me. And, and we stepped inside so they could do their job because it's a small landing on an outdoor stairwell. And um, anyway, I, I posted about it on social media because I think it's important in this age that we come from a place of unconditional love. I will shout that from the rooftops. Um, how someone behaves 
when we start determining whether someone, whether or not someone is good or worthy based on what they do, what they say, how they dress, how they show up in the world, that is conditional love, full stop. And what we need more of is unconditional love. That's how people become more charitable. That's, you won't see a picture of this young man on the internet. You won't see a video of him on the internet because I would never, ever do that to another living, breathing human who is suffering. And that was my main reason for posting the post. And also because once first responders had carried him down, there was another knock on the door. And when I opened the door, it was one of the first responders and he was black. And I say that with purpose because the young man who I was assisting was a young black male. As a middle-aged white female, um, you know, I'm not saying what other white middle-aged females would do, but I grew up down South. I grew up around bias and stereotypes. I never once judged this young man. I didn't judge him for showing up saying he OD'd. I didn't judge him for showing up at four o'clock in the morning. I didn't judge him because he was black. He was another human being who is suffering. And I showed up to help him. And addiction does not care about your race. I said this in the Facebook post. Addiction doesn't care about your race. It doesn't care about how many fucking zeros you have in your bank account. It doesn't care if you're a wife, a mother, a brother, a sister, a father, a grandparent. It doesn't care if you're straight, if you're gay, if you're transgender, if you're non-binary. It does not care. It does not care how old you are. And I'm sure there were people, and actually a couple of people were kind of alluded to the fact that I was crazy to open the door, but he knocked on that door for a purpose and he wanted 911. And when someone asks for my help, at that point, I have a choice to make. I have a choice that I can show up and I can do that. Was I taking a chance? Yes. And I knew that. And I was assuming responsibility for myself. But my heart goes out to this young man and it goes out to everyone else because people think addiction and they think drugs. Addiction is alcohol. Addiction is foods. You can have a work addiction. You can have a sex addiction. You can have an exercise addiction. Your addiction could be restraining yourself from having food. Anorexia is kind of a reverse addiction. It's an addiction to control of food we can be addicted to struggle. And we never know what goes on in someone's life that gets them to this point. But here's what I'll say. I spent 25 years in healthcare. I've been in the personal development space for a while. It is much easier to stay the same and to choose to do nothing than it is to change. People will stay where they are because it's easier. And this young man clearly did not want to stay where he was because he had attempted to detox himself. And having done what I've done, that's hard. So anyway, my heart, my soul goes out to everyone listening to this. You are absolutely 100% lovable. There's nothing wrong with you. There never has been anything wrong with you. And if you can move into that place of pure self-acceptance and just embracing the journey that you're on to become better and better and better, and that meaning not that you are not good enough, but the better and better and better meaning that you are evolving and you are growing as a person, as a human, as a soul who is on this journey. Um, it's life-changing. It's absolutely life-changing. And, um, you know, a lot of people would, would say, because I know, because I used to be one of them. That's how I can say this and know it when I say it, you know, there. There are a lot of people that think these things don't factor in for high performers and highly successful people, but it makes a huge difference. Sure, you can go out and you can make $1 million, $5 million. You can make $10 million, never do any of the inner work, but I bet you you're freaking miserable. 
I bet you you're miserable unless you had pretty much an ideal upbringing. There's always something under underneath the surface that's that's brewing because almost everybody at some point experiences some degree of self-doubt or frustration or judgment or one of those things, right? Because we're human. It's what the mind does. Anyway, would love to know what you thought about this episode. There will be links below the show notes if you're interested in wanting more information about working with me to moving into this place where you are 100% in full self-acceptance of who you are so you can create a magnificent life. I'll see you next week. Thanks for listening to this episode of Design Your Destiny. I would love to know what resonated most with you. So just take a screenshot of this episode, share it over on your Instagram stories and tag me at penny.chason and let me know what you thought. Also, if you head over to iTunes and you leave a positive review, it helps this podcast to help reach even more people making a difference, elevating humanity and mankind.